Welcome to Uncluttered and Unfiltered, the podcast urging you to let it go and don't look back with nationally acclaimed professional organizer, Christine Stone, and self-proclaimed hot damn mess radio and TV personality, Eden Kendall. Welcome back to Uncluttered and Unfiltered. I'm Eden Kendall, a broadcaster of many years. And I'm Christine Stone, an organizer, owner of Neatly Designed. The organizing business is something that thrives right after the holidays for sure because people are like, all right, now I got to get it, get it together for the new year. But leading up to it, there are many things that can be happening leading into the holidays that you can do to not just unclutter your house, but today we're mostly talking about uncluttering your mind, your psyche. Am I right? Absolutely. And it part of... Part of uncluttering your space is uncluttering your mind and not getting overwhelmed. So do you tend to get overwhelmed at holiday time? Um, it all depends. I mean, generally I have this down pat, um, but I think everybody when they're having company, they it, which is on my list, they want it to be perfect, kind of Mm -hmm. like a Hallmark movie. And that's what I think puts stress on a lot of people because sometimes the best made plans just don't happen the way you wanted them to. Like last Christmas when my daughter came down with COVID and everything had to be canceled 24 hours before Christmas Eve. So I think just, you know, kind of taking it and seeing how it's gonna unfold, but being organized is part of taking the stress out of your life during the holidays. I am one who has grand plans at the start of every holiday season. This is the year we're going to do all of the things that we traditionally have always done or that our families have already done. And not, I would say, not even half of those things tend to get done. And I know that we're gonna talk about trimming not your tree, trimming your to-do to-do list list today. So let's talk about some of those things that you have on your list. I also came across a great article from a a company that puts out a calendar app, actually, and they talk about how to formulate your list and then how to actually attack it. But before we get to that, what are some of the things that you have on your list of of things that tend to crop up on a holiday-themed to-do list? Well, the first thing I do all year round is keep lists. You can keep a handwritten list. I do it that way sometimes, or I have an app that's called the to-do list and you can make different lists. Like I make lists for who I'm giving gifts to. That's one list. Then I make another list of food I need. So keeping lists and being able to cross things off is how you kind of are able to move forward and not kind of oh god I forgot that oh I should have done that I why didn't I write that down so keeping lists for me is imperative do you ever have on one of your lists an item to refer back to another list because that's something I do (laughs) like I'll have a list and then I'll say see other lists but then I think if you're doing that you have too many lists okay you know what I mean highly possible because then your brain's having to go to all Uh for me it's basically you know, what I need to get done for that holiday. And I, the only time I skip forward is who I'm giving gifts to, like say at Christmas, that I would keep that list. But if I'm in Thanksgiving mode, I'm focused on Thanksgiving. And then when it's over, we move on to Christmas. So that's how I kind of work. My brain works. I think when you take on too much, it, it just, nothing gets done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that comes up every year and my household is Christmas cards, holiday cards, Hanukkah cards, the whole, you know, New Year's, do you do a New Year's card? Do you send them out? Does anybody send them out anymore? There was no doubt in my mind that you do. Absolutely. There was no doubt in my mind that you'd be somebody who would continue to do that. Uh, Probably there's no doubt in your mind that I'm going to send out a happy everything on social media yes and like I done. knew it but it might surprise you to know that we love getting the cards that's the thing I mean it's so selfish we love to receive the cards we even love the letters when there's like a big update if somebody takes the time to write a poem we we read it we do all of that um but and we hang them but then what do you do with them organizer 
Okay, Do we and keep you know them? what? I love that you mentioned that because I have gone to more homes where people have kept years of Christmas cards. And when we're going through them, I'll ask, oh, you know, why were you keeping this? I don't know. I don't even know who these people are. <laughs> I get that all the time. So what I do, it's a tradition. I hang them up. You know, we all enjoy them. We see how everyone's grown. And then after the holidays, they go in the garbage because part of receiving Christmas cards is to see the updates every year. Why do I want to see a card from someone's kid's 15 years ago or three years ago so it's a it's so important to let it go and don't look back okay all right i guess and if it's family and you really care you'll take a picture of it or you'll with spend time with them oh there's if, that if I mean, there's you know, family you, you know i mean take a picture when you're doing something with them and frame it if they're really that important in your life but to keep Christmas cards, it really builds up. I mean, really builds up. Of course it does. And I do love that you said that they'll say, I don't even know who that is anymore because <laughs> we know we're on certain people's lists. We can't even imagine how we're still on their list. Right. And we're like, do you not ever look? Are you shipping these out for someone else to address? Which is okay, but it's obvious because otherwise I don't think we'd still make the cut. Right. <laughs> That's so funny. Which doesn't hurt my feelings at all. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. What about some of the other things that are on your list well the top one after making list is learning to say no mm -hmm. and the reason why i bring that up is because the holidays you feel obligated i think covid gave everyone an excuse but that excuse is kind of over so everyone's getting bogged down with a million things and they're feeling torn and overwhelmed so the art of saying no to the things you really, really don't want to do. And you don't have to be mean about it. It's just really man managing your time to where you're not exhausted by the time Thanksgiving comes or Christmas Eve and you just want to go in bed and not come out, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know what's difficult too is entertaining because if you are like, like a homebody and you have the mindset where you don't necessarily want to go to a party, but I do have that in me too. Sometimes I'm just like, I just don't have the energy. Then you feel badly even throwing a party because you feel like now I'm making all of my friends have to go to a party. But it's just one of those things that do you, should you, should you? Maybe you can uh, do some, um, some uh, uh, multitasking and invite several different friends out to lunch and just get that done. There's different ways you can approach that and tackle that animal. Well, I think whether it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, or whatever holiday it is, having someone bring something. Mm -hmm. You know, don't try to tackle the whole dinner yourself. You know, have everyone bring a dish. I just think any little bit helps because the stores are crowded, the roads are crowded, and it's no fun. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really no fun when everywhere you go, it's stressful. So let me look at this really quick. This is the the article I mentioned, and it's from, it's called calendar.com, which I think gives them some credibility. I mean, they snagged that website pretty quickly. So this is the psychology of lists and the things that you should be doing on lists. And there are four Ds that you need to know when you're approaching lists. Do, which is, of course, do the things on your list, right? Take action. Delegate which is what you just said. How are everybody bringing a dish, delegating these things on your list? Well, and also, I mean, you know, I'll never forget when my daughter was in fourth grade and her teacher fell off the ladder putting up Christmas lights. I mean, she was injured pretty bad. So delegate things that really, I just think some things need to be delegated, whether it's a family friend doing it, a handyman, um, I mean, or just skip it skip it well that's defer is on the list yes. maybe put it off if, if it's not a holiday imperative and we're talking about a holiday to-do list deferring it till the new year yes delete that's what you're talking about just delete it just drop it i mean you Take don't get off the list you don't have to delete it forever you could delete it for this year and then reinstate it next year but trying to do everything that's when accidents do happen because you're rushing you're rushing you're rushing mm -hmm. so taking something off your list just for one year is not going to be the end of the world have you heard about the two minute rule the um, two minute rule is when is that when food drops <laughs> Or is that the two-second rule? That's the five-second rule. Oh, okay. Rule. Yeah, that's the only one I've heard of. The two-minute rule is if it's on your list and you can do it in two minutes, just do it. 
just do it really quick. Most of the things on a to-do list aren't those things, but if you add those in, suddenly they make the list so so incredibly long that if you can sneak in there and just like, oh, I could just do that in two minutes. Let me just knock that off really quick. So, I've, so you can feel yourself put a line through it. Well, so, that's just also like that'd be gift wrap. Like now's the time to purge your gift wrap, organize your gift wrap. It's simple, it's easy to do. It won't take time at all. And then you can make a list of what you need. Do you need more scotch tape? Do you need a new pair of scissors? Do you need pens? What do you need so that you're not running out at the last minute to mm -hmm. get a gift bag or you know a, a gift for somebody? So it's all about the small things, like you said, just do it and get it done and move on on the list. Assigning yourself due dates. Do you ever do that? No. No. So I tend to take a to-do list and then go to my calendar and plug in things on specific dates. Then, so that's goes back. She's laughing at me. She's laughing I'm at me. Sorry, I that can't goes help back it. to my cross referencing all of my right. lists. So yeah. I have a list upon a list upon a list because I'll take my to do list and I'll say, mm -hmm. all right, so I have to do the wrapping. I'm going to do that on this day. Oh, also on my list is this. I'll do that on that day. And then, then that's when the defer comes back into play. <laughs> I'm exhausted just listening to your lists. <laughs> I know. And then here's the last one I'll give you from this tasks, not goals really break it down into a task and not a goal. So in other words, you can't look at it like a, have you ever heard the slicing the salami look? Like you can't say, oh, I'm gonna eat this whole salami. You have to like slice it up. So if your goal is to, I don't know, um, you know, make sure that everyone in your family has a good time, you can't put that on the list. You have to make it into little tiny things. And that brings us to expectations and how much on your list is based on someone else's expectations and how much is based on what you really want to do well i think at the holidays everything is about your kids expectations <laughs> because in my opinion they have a vision mm -hmm. of what they want it to look like how it used to be and the warmth of home and if you don't deliver that they will comment and they will say something at least in my family they will because everybody likes to kind of replicate what went on through their childhood that were their favorite favorite things whether it's a favorite food a favorite family tradition so that's part of when you're you're a mom and you're older and you're like god i just don't want to do such and such this year but if i don't I'm never going to hear the end of it. It's trying to fulfill your kids' expectations. And sometimes, I have to be honest, you're exhausted and you just don't feel like doing such and such, whatever it may be. And I think that's okay because soon your kids do grow up and they make their own traditions with their own families. And maybe that's why that happens because your mom's too tired. Maybe so. <laughs> maybe so. Let me, let me, uh, ask you this what does mitch's list look like at the holidays oh my gosh. does it exist is there a list no no he and does not have a list i no. think when you're married to an organizer you don't have you to know have all list. your lists are taken <laughs> care of it's just he embraces the organizer part of me he doesn't try to fight it he used to a long time ago but now he just i think he loves it i mean he knows that everything is taken care of in a way that makes it easier for him now here's here's my story about a to-do list and the defer and the delete and the whole deal so obviously i'm 56 i've said it many many times and i know you're like oh i'm sure your husband is you know 40 because cougar no not a <laughs> he is a younger man he is 56 but by a few months shorter than me oh. so he's a little bit younger oh. how about that so I'm the older one. But anyway, at 56, should he be up on the roof putting up the Christmas no. lights? No. Okay, I don't no. disagree with you. But I also don't agree with the fact that we moved into our new neighborhood three years ago, gangbusters on the holiday lights, I, to the point where they had to make a rule after the third year we couldn't win the neighborhood contest again. Oh, my God. oh we're bad. We're very competitive. This is what we did last year. Not, I'm sorry, not last year, because last year we were not eligible anymore. The year before, <laughs> we knew that in order to win again, we were going to have to do something else. So we found out when the judges were coming by, and we blasted music, oh my holiday gosh. music. I was going to go get a snow machine if we were able to win it again, but I also didn't want to because I didn't want to be that family that right. always wins. But, I knew, but my point is, I don't want to go from hero to zero. 
So I would like to maybe but hire someone. That's this expectations, time. though. That's like someone else's people, expectations. Yes, someone else's. So it's not your kids, but it's the neighbors, you know, which that's other people's expectations are what get us over, over stressed and feeling overwhelmed. So, yes, I mean, if that's something you really want to do and I mean, you can afford to hire someone to come and put the lights up. I I suggest never getting on a ladder after a certain age period just because you're just setting yourself up for, I don't know, that's just me, but I'm sure there are many people over 50 get getting on big, tall ladders to hang Christmas lights. It's just, it makes me a little nervous. I'm not nervous to get on a ladder. I am because of my fear of heights, but I'm saying I'm not nervous because of age. I'm nervous about ever asking someone else to get on a ladder that's my age or older like in other words if i were to really whine and complain and then he gets on the ladder and has an accident how am i going to feel well also let me ask you does it bother you when you have to ask for help nobody wants to have to ask i yeah, but that's nobody, what i mean i think that's another th thing that happens during the holidays people feel if I have to ask for help, there's something wrong. Why can't I do it? What's wrong with me? You know, and then you start bashing yourself. There's nothing wrong asking for help. That's how I'm an organizer. People, some people are great at some things and I'm good at being an organizer. And when people hire me, they feel like a failure because they should be able to organize themselves. And it's just not true. Everybody is good at something and asking for help doesn't mean you're a failure. It means you're kind of really smart because you've said, I'm not good at this or I don't want to do this. So I'm asking for someone else to do it. Do you have any traditions in your home that you have let go of and not looked back on? Is there anything that you've said too much, can't keep it up, or you, you, you're not at that point? You might I, escape it because now you've gotten to the point where the kids are grown and they're... That's a good question. No, I have not got to that point yet and I my daughter's pregnant and so next Christmas we'll have a baby so I don't think I'll get to that point for a while but I have started to designate I definitely have started to designate I I I feel that it it's made my life easier designating. So you, so you will you will give people some some jobs yes leading up to it yes so my husband's family is from Indiana and the, his dad's side of the family on Christmas Eve, they always have Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Believe it or not, I found out that's I'm huge sorry. in Japan too. Christmas Eve Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know where it came from. Although, if you ask my husband, we're kin to the, the Sanders family. Oh my! God. I guess it's I guess his aunt Toots was cousins with Colonel Sanders. I don't know. That's a whole that's thing. So anyway, there's there's a whole story behind that. But anyway, so so KFC. Which sounds great because you're not cooking. It's Christmas Eve. It's great. Well, here are a couple of issues. The girl child is gluten-free, mm -hmm. but but still everybody wants it. But then there's a lot of complaining because there's nothing there that she, she really can eat. Secondly, every KFC in a 25-mile radius has closed down in this city where we live. You have to go really far to get Kentucky Fried Chicken. So one year I said, you know what, you guys? We're going to have... Grocery store Publix fried chicken. There's no reason for us to go this far to go get this chicken that three of us are, are eating and one person is just not able to even eat. So that didn't go over very well. People felt like there was that feeling of right. it was kind of sad. And it's not tradition and that's not what we do. I, I think it's traditions that people want to keep doing because it makes them feel like the holidays, whether it's songs or board games were big huge board game people during the holidays whatever it is singing i mean caroling we have a tradition where i live that people go caroling i mean it's just do you carol i love to carol sing us a carol oh no i'm not singing i did <laughs> i said i like to carol i didn't say i'm a good singer there's two i mean ask yeah. the young boy that was next to me one year who had to put his like hands over his ears <laughs> um no i i i just think we're getting back to tradition and what what the expectations are from family members sure. on you know whether whatever it is whether it's a meal or gift giving or mm -hmm. you know 
it's tough though to to say no to certain things, you know, and that's that that's I I think what it all boils down to. If I were to suggest a, a really solid takeaway, is are the things that are on your list on your list for somebody else and to fulfill expectations. And as I mentioned, not even of your own family members, but your neighbors right. or people who aren't thinking that hard about what you're thinking that hard about. And if that's the case, shouldn't you delegate these things to the people who care the most about them? For example, if it's a specific, my husband liked to take puppy chow. Are you familiar with puppy yes, chow? The snack, that, yeah, the, snack the check mix yeah, and the confectioner yeah. sugar and the, yep. and the melted chocolate. He liked to take that around to his clients which he liked it when I would make it. So I implemented a, you're going to make it and I'm going to show you how. Right. Because I felt like that was, now now the kids are older, it's not so difficult. But at the time, it was just a whole big thing. And so that was just one more thing on the list. Right. So you just have to kind of look and see, like, is this for us? Is this for somebody else? I loved that they loved it, especially someone like me who can't cook a thing, that there was something I could make that people were asking for, loved it. Well, I but it also got crazy. Yeah. Well, I also think that when you go back to, you know, when your kids are older, if you need to delegate to them because they will come home and throw their feet up on the sofa, and you're like, hello. So I think asking for help makes them see, hey, can you help me make this? Can you help me do this? Can you go pick up the Kentucky Fried Chicken? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. giving them things to do, which I have done. My, I, I kind of really given the grocery list to one of my daughters. Like, can you pick this up for me? Can you do that for me? Because I grocery stores at the holidays mm. are the bane of my existence. So um, I just think delegating out during the holidays will definitely be less stress on you. Absolutely. Absolutely. What else do you have there in your copious notes? Um, let's see. Oh, there's so much. I, I mean, mean, that's the thing about the holidays, you know, it, it gets to the point where you're trying to make it be fun. It's usually your only time off and then you're running around like crazy, like a mad person. Well, one thing I'm going to say, and this is from an organizer's perspective, which is why we're all and here. And that is stop with the unnecessary gift giving because part of my job is to go in and I'm going to tell you what I hear all the time. Oh, my aunt Sally gave that to me. I'm like, Oh, do you love it? No, I hate it. Mm -hmm. Well, why do you have it? Well, I don't want to hurt her feelings. And what if she comes over? And I know you can all relate to this because I hear it. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time I heard this, I'd be a millionaire. And I think part of what causes this is people feel obligated to run out and go get a gift. They get anything because they don't have time. They're overstressed and they don't have time. So they just pick up some tchotchke and they give it to you. And now you have to show it. You have to act like you love it. And it's a whole thing. And it's so unnecessary. I know people say, because I always give gift cards, but the reason is, is because People can pick out what they love, what they want, and something they'll use or something that they'll show or something that they desperately need. And then you don't deal with this anymore. Other than that, it just becomes clutter in someone else's house. And I can tell you they don't display it. They just throw it in a drawer, throw it in a closet, and it just sits in there. And so I think the unnecessary gift giving, I mean, you can do a gift card anywhere. You could do it to Starbucks. You could do it to a store. You could anywhere. Someone who works out like you, there's a million places. Mm -hmm. So, and you would probably love that. So you could go pick out something yourself. So that's my, but that's coming from an organizer's brain and what I see every day in my job. And here's my advice coming from the person who has the clutter, who has all of this stuff. I agree. I would rather have those things. Also, I say, use the bath bombs. Use those gifts. If, they, if you do receive them, instead of putting them somewhere thinking you're going to remember you've got them if, in case company accidentally comes over and you have to have a gift. Sometimes I'll get something like that, a candle or whatever. I'm like, I, use it. Just use it. So Drink you're a re-gifter. Well, I have been known to be a re-gifter, <laughs> not necessarily in my close circle, but certainly, yeah. If yeah. there's somebody, somebody gives me something that I can tell was probably 
their re-gift to me. Right. So but see you, how it travels, it travels on and on. So, so I say, don't save that really. I have one friend um, that I, that he's more, uh, he's a uh, um, somebody in my work relationship that sends me a really nice bottle of wine every year at the holidays. And I drink that right away. Not like the minute I, um, you know, open it. But the next couple of weeks, if I'm going to have a nice night at home, I'm going to drink that really good wine. Because you will save things that people give you for an occasion or because you think you're never going to need it or use it. So just use it. I don't know how many times I've received bath bombs and then I never take a bath with a bath bomb. Take one with your bath, new bath bombs. Yeah, I'm not a bath bomb girl. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Christine doesn't like bath bombs. Sorry. I don't love them either, but if you're going to give them to me, I'm going to use them. Well, so, there you because go. Because otherwise, when Christine comes over, she's going to be like, what's all oh, the bath bombs? What's this drawer of bath bombs? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Remember when my daughter, this is so completely off topic, but my daughter used to collect, and, and we'd give them to her in her stocking at the holidays. Those EOS, I think they are, the yeah. lip bombs Remember? that are like eggs. And Chris opens up a drawer in our bathroom, and she's like, what is this? And it was like every color egg looked like Easter. It was all like lip yep. balm that was expired. Yep. So, yeah, just when you're giving stuff in that, 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 you know, when Santa's filling the stocking, Santa needs to remember that we don't need all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I don't know about you, but I can tell a re-gift a mile away. I'm yeah. really, really good at that, which is fine. But it's, it's, I don't know. I guess I really put a lot of thought into my gift giving, a lot of thought. So I think that you always think you want someone else to do that too, but people don't have time. They really yeah. don't have time. I love giving gifts. When I have the perfect gift for somebody, I love it. And I absolutely love it. And I've sat on gifts that were perfect, so I order them, and they're just perfect. And then I can hardly wait, and I usually end up giving them two weeks <laughs> early before the birthday or the holiday comes up. But then you've got those people that are just, you know that At the last they have minute. an expectation. Yeah. Again, we're getting back to expectations. That's the key word today. And let's not let's not do it yeah i agree Maybe i think we we've say gotten to each to other point. let's not do it and i think that's why during the few couple years of covid people really were like so relaxed they're like god i don't have to entertain i don't have to do you know i think they enjoyed the quiet just for a couple holiday seasons now everyone is excited to have everything back mm -hmm. but i also see the stress coming back i also see the anxiety coming back so you know, you get one, you get the other because of expectations. All right. What about, and I'll, I'll leave it at this because this is something that a, an organizer probably sees a lot of, putting things out at the holidays when people are visiting because they gave them to you those years ago. Oh, I'm, 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 I hear about it all the time. I hear about, I only put this out at the holidays and then I put it back underneath the cabinet because I don't want to hurt such and such as feelings. It happens. It's fine if you have the room to store this stuff. If you are taking up valuable real estate in your house for stuff that you put out once a year so you don't hurt someone's feelings, you really have to look at that. You really do. Oh, sigh. <laughs> Let's talk about all of the ways that we can all stay in touch. Okay, so we ask you, and I don't know that we've spent much time asking you to do this, but if you would leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts, whether it's this carrier or that carrier, five-star review is what we're seeking. If that's the most you can give us, if you can give us more, we'll take it and maybe write a little something about the show. That helps us. That really yeah. does help us. Uh, also on social media, we're on TikTok, we're on Instagram, Facebook. We even have a Facebook group uncluttered and unfiltered ladies over 40 just request to join it and you're in it's that easy and anywhere our website uncluttered and unfiltered instagram uncluttered and unfiltered youtube uncluttered and unfiltered so it's very easy to find us and we love to hear feedback from you and if you have anything you want us to talk about and that's been known to happen know. yes so so here's where we're at you can join our mailing list on uncluttered.unfiltered.com. We're going we're gonna to end things right here, and we're going to ask you this holiday season to let it go. And don't look back.